Blue biologists in today's daily revision task, you are asked to produce a diagram on the cell cycle. The following short video clip will describe it in detail. So, we start off your cell cycle. You've got your cell, 46 chromosomes, which is 23 pairs of chromosomes. It enters the G1 phase. Right, G1 phase, you can either call it technically it's called the gap phase. But if you want to think of it as your growth one phase. So this is where all like your large structures are copied. So your organelles are duplicated. It's where you go and <clears throat> you're making sure that you've got enough phospholipids produced. It's where all those other little building blocks that are required are produced. So at the end of G1 phase, you've not duplicated any of your chromosomes, most importantly. So you still have the same number of chromosomes. So after your G1 phase, you move into the S phase. So the S phase, right, is called the synthesis phase, right? During this point, this is where your DNA is copied. So you're going to go technically from 46 chromosomes to 92 chromosomes, so 46 pairs of chromosomes, right? So we go and we copy the DNA in the S phase. After the S phase, you have the second gap phase. In your second gap phase, that's, that's just where the cell is going to carry on enlarging. It carries on checking that it's got enough organelles. It carries on checking that it's got enough other biological molecules. So if we go and we put the G1 phase, the S phase, and the G2 phase together, all of those three are classified as the interphase. Right, all interphase means is in between mitosis. Right, is that it's probably the easiest way to think about it. So, at the end of the G2 phase, we move into your M phase. Right, your M phase, or your mitotic phase, is where mitosis is going to happen. So it's where the DNA is going to get pulled apart and you're going to get cell division happening during cytokinesis. So all cytokinesis is the one cell splitting into two cells, right? Which are both going to have an equal number of chromosomes, right? You can almost think of it as cyto bit like cytoplasm and kinesis to chop. The cell at this point can either go into a G0 phase, right, where it's not going to do much of anything, right, it'll just carry on and it, it's almost, it, it goes into a quiescent state, right, all quiescent means is it's not dividing, right. After a certain period of time, it can go from that G0 phase back into G1 and it'll carry on dividing. So that is your basic cell cycles. So the second features of the cell cycle that we need to consider are the checkpoints. So at the end of your G1 phase, there is a G1 checkpoint. At the end of the G2 phase, there is a G2 checkpoint, and in mitosis, there's a spindle assembly checkpoint. The G1 checkpoint goes and it checks the cell size to make sure it's big enough to divide, checks that it's got enough nutrients, it checks that there's enough growth factors, right? So we need the growth factors there to get it to carry on growth after we go through cytokinesis and it checks for DNA damage because you don't want to go and start replicating DNA that's already damaged or else you'll get mutations happening. Right, your G2 checkpoint, right, it, it goes and it carries on, it checks that it's got enough growth factors and nutrients and such, but more importantly, it checks that the DNA has not been damaged during DNA replication. Because during DNA replication, all of your DNA is unraveled 
from those histone complexes and it's spun out so you could quite easily get a substitution happening or a deletion or something wrong with the DNA right if it turns out that your DNA is damaged then either you'll go back into a G0 phase or your cell might undergo apoptosis and and die right because you don't want it carrying on if DNA is damaged or actually have mutations last part back end of mitosis you've got the spindle assembly checkpoint because if your spindle fibers haven't gone in attached to these pairs of chromosomes correctly you might get incorrect number of chromosomes going to both sides which can cause an entire host of problems and inherited diseases and such forth so at that point all we do we just check that the spindle fibers are attached incorrectly all right stop like yeah. hopefully this video should have helped you complete your daily revision task please subscribe so you can keep up to date with other videos to help with your daily revision tasks you can follow me on facebook or follow me on twitter to help you keep up to date